Castro marks the second anniversary of his revolution with the biggest military parade ever staged in Cuba, featuring tanks and other heavy weapons from Russia and Red Czechoslovakia. Shortly afterwards, Castro demanded the United States Embassy drastically reduce its staff to 11 persons. It was the last straw in his long campaign of provocation and harassment. President Eisenhower broke off diplomatic relations with a message read by Press Secretary Haggerty. There is a limit to what the United States and self-respect can endure. That limit has now been reached. Our friendship for the Cuban people is not affected. It is my hope and my conviction that in the not too distant future, it will be possible for the historic friendship between us once again to find reflection in normal relations of every sort. Meanwhile, our sympathy goes out to the people of Cuba now suffering under the yoke of a dictator. Laos, strategic buffer state between the Red Bloc and Free Asia, is watched with concern by all the world as fighting intensifies between communist rebel forces and the pro-Western regime. Relatively small numbers are fighting in the mountainous, densely forested land, where towns and cities are isolated bare spots linked only by crude roads. Information on events is scanning, but America charges massive outside aid by Russia and Red China, and the Soviet concedes as airlifted supplies to the rebels. These last films show the battle in which government troops ousted rebels from Vientiane, the capital. Now a new thrust is directed against the royal city of Luang Prabang. American fleet and marine units are in readiness. The conflict widens, but hope continues that some solution can be found which will restore Laos to its status as a neutral buffer state in a crucial era. Originally, the nation was created as such a buffer by the Geneva Conference. Now it is a focus of tension, the scene of a potentially dangerous flare-up in the Cold War.